Year 12, it's Jenny here. I hope you're safe and well, not going completely cray cray at home. Um, I am here now to talk to you a little bit about the UCAS process and why we make you all apply to university even if you don't want to go. Um, we're not going to drag you kicking and screaming, but I want to put it in context for you. Um, even if you're veering towards going into an apprenticeship or going on to employment after sixth form, we still go through the UCAS university application process with you. There's a couple of reasons for this. In our experience, particularly at TFA, we get a lot of ex-students come back to us and say they want to apply for uni maybe two, three or even five years in the future. If you've already gone through the UCAS process, you'll know what you're doing but also it means that we will have had a reference kept on file for you. So even if you've left us and you come back years later, there should be a reference on file for you and we can still give you that academic reference. Also, writing the personal statement for UCAS is really invaluable. It's one of the, one of the most important pieces of writing that you're gonna do between now and probably when you do your university dissertation in three or four years time. Doing the personal statement is also good for those of you that want to go on to an apprenticeship or employment because you're going to have to fill out an application for that as well. So we get you starting to think about what your skills are, what your experience is and what you can bring to either a university setting or an employer or an apprentice, apprenticeship that's looking for someone straight out of sixth form. If you are a TFA student, you will have got one of these. It is your student handbook. I told you to look after it and I told you to read it. There is loads of information in here about the university process, apprenticeships, employment, student finance, all at the back, all under the resource section. It, I know it's all good information because I wrote it, so you know it's going to be good. Have a look through this first of all, if you're a bit stuck and you're not quite sure where to go and then get on to Unifrog. Yeah, you all know about Unifrog now, you know you can look at courses and look at um, employers and apprenticeships and all sorts of things like that on Unifrog, so that's gonna be really invaluable for you. Applying for uni's changed a bit over the last few years. Years ago, you used to you know, go to uni because you wanted to be something. So you'd go to be, you'd do a law degree because you wanted to be a lawyer, you'd do a geography degree because you wanted to be a geography teacher. Um, apart from things like dentistry, medicine, veterinary, architecture, that's not really the case anymore. I worked in graduate recruitment for 15 years and the clients that we had, which were in the publishing sector, were just looking for graduates who had proven that they could study at a higher level and had the transferable skills and ability that you would expect to have from a graduate to work for their company. Now, there are hundreds of really good blue chip companies that will take graduates, mostly dependent on whether you've got a good degree, which is a two, one or a first, but they're not really bothered about what the subject is. Now, if you want the university experience and you've decided that, yeah, I want to go to uni, I want to have three or four years of independence and have everything that comes with that academic and that social life of university, you need to pick a course that you are going to enjoy. By the fact that you enjoy it, you're going to get a better grade, you're going to enjoy it more, you're going to be studying it for three or four years, it's going to be really immersive, you've got to be really enthusiastic about what you're going to study. Now, there's a couple of ways you can search for courses. <clears throat> if you decide you want to stay in London, which is fine, you can either you know move out of home or stay at home but go to a London university, you then need to narrow down geographically the universities within the London area that you feel you can travel to each day. Then you can start looking at the courses at those particular institutions. If you're not bothered where you go, so literally the whole of the UK is your oyster, you could go to St Andrews in Scotland or you know Bristol or somewhere down south, then you can start choosing by course alone. Yeah, you need to get onto Unifrog, you need to start looking at courses. There are courses out there that you probably don't even know exist, but you are perfect for. So it's a lot about researching. Yeah, if for instance you enjoy business, but you're much more of a kind of social person, event management might be something that you haven't considered before, but that would be perfect for you. Institutions are always offering different courses every year. Now, because of the current situation with the coronavirus, some 
institutions may withdraw courses they may add new courses on so it's really important that you keep up with those courses that you're interested in at those institutions you're interested in so that you can see what the developments are you need to pick something that's right for you I always advise students to look specifically at the courses they're interested in and by that I mean not just the teaching hours the one-to-one -one hours if there is web delivered teaching or it's in person or it's seminar or you know you're only going to do half of your time in uni but it's things like the course content so if you do find a course that you like the look of look at the course specification that is literally everything you will study year one year two year three or year four if when you're reading it you think this sounds great I really like the sound of this, I'm really interested in this, I really want to study this and it gets you really enthusiastic, then it's probably a course for you, yeah? So make a note of the course, the institution, and then you can use that in comparison with others, yeah? Once you've got some courses and some institutions, you can take Mr Lupton's suggestion and do a spreadsheet of the pros and cons and you can narrow things down like that. Um, and you can also go to um, Unistats, which is a website that gives you um, statistics on all different universities about um, the, the courses, the progression after university, um, the employment rate, the further study rate, all those sorts of things, but also things like the cost of living, the social um, elements of that particular university, the, the clubs and societies they have, all those sorts of things. And again, all the details for Unistats are in your student handbook. You need to be looking at things like accommodation as well. If you are going to move away, some universities don't have halls of residence. Yeah, I went to a London university and my uni had no no halls. You know, it would have been having to go and share, do a flat share or a house share or something like that. Um, I personally chose to stay at home because that was suited my circumstances at the time. Uh, you may want to go to a uni that is a specific campus university. So something like the University of East Anglia, for example, is a massive university that's all been built around the campus and its uh, halls of residence are sited at the site along with shops and libraries and, you know, bars and clubs and all sorts of things. Very similar to, <coughs> excuse me, UEL as well. UEL has halls of residence. So even though that is a London uni, it has halls of residence. So you need to start looking at that as well, because you need to think about, do I want to live in halls? Do I want to move out and share with other people? Do I, you know, what options are there? And that's something else to think about. Most universities will offer halls of residence for the first year only. And then at the end of the first year, you've made friends, you've met people that you know you could live with and those you know you can't live with. And you can then decide on house shares and things like that. So there's lots to think about. But ultimately, the first thing you need to start doing is looking at courses, courses that you think are right for you and then narrowing down all of the other sort of permeations of, of what you need to think about in terms of uni. It's going to be a long process. Yeah, there's no rush. That's why we're starting you early. We start our process a lot earlier than most other schools, because the quicker you can get applied, the quicker you will get accepted or get offers. And it just takes the pressure off a bit as well. And particularly at the moment where that you've got a little bit more time during progression week to look at stuff and research things, it's a perfect time to start. So we're going to get you cracking on the process now.